First you draw a circle, then you dot the eyes, add a great big smile. That's a weird looking owl, but it's a perfectly fine Kirby. Welcome everybody to Kirby's Adventure for the NES. My name is Dylan Spyraga and I will be your host through this Let's Play that was definitely totally not inspired by someone more entertaining doing a Kirby Adventure Let's Play recently. Absolutely not. <laughs> This is the second game of the Kirby franchise, and it introduced a lot of things that would kind of define the Kirby series later on. Like, this is the first game to introduce, like, the slide tackle. This is the first game to introduce, uh, Kirby being pink. But this is also the first game to introduce copy powers as well, and the game's demo here is actually going to show this. See, you can eat certain enemies, and you'll be able to gain their powers. It's honestly pretty cool. So how about we get into that right now with this charming little intro here and play some Koibi. Get a monster to clobber that there Kirby. All right, so basic rundown of the controls. D-pad moves you around. Up allows you to float or enter doors. Down allows you to crouch. A to jump, B to inhale. This game is a little bit, uh, a little bit more slippery and a little bit less responsive than a lot of the later Kirby games, though, but it, it kind of makes sense, because this is still only the second Kirby game. So as you can see, we've gotten our first copy ability here. Let's float up. And get started. I, I personally love this game, and I have kind of a history with it, because I've actually played a lot more of the Game Boy Advance remake of it. Uh, this game was actually remade for the Game Boy Advance in sometime in the early 2000s, and it actually tied into the Kirby cartoon show that was going around at the time as well, or at least, you know, some of the official art had the same style. Where did that UFO go? Okay, I've just wasted beam. Can I... Can I go back in there? Is he there again? He's gone. He killed himself. The first secret in the game, and we have a suicidal UFO. So this game has a lot of different copy powers, and I was going to show one of the best ones out there, but... No, the game decided you're not allowed to. So it's also going to take me a little bit to get adjusted to this game as well, because I'm more used to how the later Kirby games play as far as their control goes. Kirby is a little bit slippery. He's a little bit of an unresponsive boy, but he's a good boy. He's a good round friend. Does a lot of good round friend things, and there we go. Got a 50, or 5,000 point, 50,000 points from the goal game. Wow, we're doing really good. And we've actually also unlocked our first sub-game as well. Uh, I'll do that in a sec. Let's actually get some more game, actual gameplay in first. All right. I'm gonna get rid of Spark here because I actually want to use the projectile powers of Kirby's mouth. And by that I mean I want Beam instead. So a lot of the enemies here would kind of become later commonplace enemies in the Kirby series. And see that, see that star over there? This is the warp star that will take you to different parts of the stage. But I am actually going to despawn it. And there's a reason for it. Because if you despawn the warp star and then go all the way to the right here, the first HAL room of the series. So HAL rooms in a lot of the later Kirby games are actually these nice rooms that have a bunch of copy powers that you usually can't get early on, or sometimes have like a, a health item as well. This game, not so much. It's just a little, uh, secret area, and of course the Warp Star respawns, and we can take it on, on our journey. That HAL room, by the way, only exists in the NES version, it does not appear in the Game Boy Advance remake. And Nightmare in Dreamland is interesting, I know people that are, like, uh, super into the game, like I am, and there are also a lot of people out there who aren't really that big into it, and I think part of the reason why is because it's a very... It's a very authentic remake in a few ways. 
and it's a little bit too accurate for its own good sometimes, because it gets rid of a lot of the kind of innovations that Kirby's Superstar had. Still a good game, though. Let's use Crash. Anytime you beat Poppy Brothers Senior, you get Crash, which is a screen nuke. Deals damage to everything on screen, and deals tons of damage to mini bosses. But you can only use it once, so be careful about that. Personally, I think microphone is a little bit better, but... We'll see. Also, this being a, a late NES game, there's a lot of graphically intensive moments and kind of a little bit of slowdown here and there, too. But on the other hand, like, this is a really good-looking NES game. I think a lot of people, when they think of NES games, they either think of, like, kind of these... kind of crappy-looking games, sort of, or, or they think of, like, the Mega Man games. I think the Mega Man games are some of the best-looking games on the NES, and a lot of people kind of go for that Capcom NES look because of, like, the nice, thick outlines, the... overall, they look good. But I think Kirby's Adventure kind of has this this visual style that A, looks really good, and B, isn't really replicated by a lot of other games. I would love to see a lot of other games that look like this. Alright, our first sub-game, Crane Fever. The objective here is to grab a Kirby. I'm gonna go for this big boy, although I don't think I got him. Oh, I might have. I might have. Oh, the big boy. Yeah, we got the big boy. Nice. Can we get the double? Did we time it right? It's kind of a matter of timing and accuracy here. Hell yeah, nice. Also, I love, like, those bubbles and patterns on the black background there. It's, it's a really, really cool aesthetic. Again, I think this is one of the best-looking NES games out there. It's neither here nor there, though. Let's stop gushing about the game's graphics and go into the third level here. Third part of Vegetable Valley. Every one of the game's levels is separated into... four to six different little sub-stages. So we're on the third sub-stage of level one. Or, I guess, we're on 1-3 if you want to be a little bit... A little bit more, uh... Expeditious with how you say things. Alright, we got Fireball Kirby. Travel forward, zoom zoom. Neither of these waterfalls have any secrets, unfortunately. These little holes here don't have any secrets either. I don't know if I'm gonna be getting all the secrets in this game. And part of it is because I don't remember where all the secrets are. If you want me to be honest, it's it's been a while. Also, Fireball is a very good power to have because it has some invulnerability frames to it as well. Come down here. Let me eat you. Get in my belly. Anytime those fire boys try to blow the flames in my general direction, it usually does not go well for the frame rate. It's being a late NES game with a lot of sprite effects going on. Sometimes the frame rate gets a little bit chunky. Ooh, that is a museum. I'm, I'll cover that after we do this stage. Because we're getting to one of my favorite pieces of music in the game. <laughs> I, I love this music that they use for like a lot of the a lot of like the cavernous areas and I could fight you normally, Mr. Frosty, but I refuse. Come over here. Come over here. Come come over here. Alright, fine. If you're not gonna come over there, over here, then I am going to just... I'll, I'll fight you the Kirby way. Oh, now, now you can come over here, since I no longer have my fireball tackle. Since you bounce off walls after you hit with a fireball tackle, I... As long as he was, like, here, I didn't want to risk it. 
No, he just decides to be a butt. Okay. I guess that's cool. Freeze is an interesting power. It's kind of like the spark we got earlier on, except it freezes enemies in place, and those enemies can actually be kicked. The ice cubes that they make can be kicked at other enemies. And then we get the third of the kind of area of effect powers, Needle. Needle is probably the worst of the three, honestly. Um, it only stays out for a limited amount of time. Uh, it doesn't have as much... I think it has better vertical range than the others, but has a less horizontal range than the others. It's not that great a power-up, if you want me to be honest. Ooh, we got candy. Here's a Kirby staple. The invincibility candy. Lollipops are in certain stages that will make Kirby become invulnerable, which is good for getting that one-up. Oh my god. So much, so much slowdown from hitting that cannon. There we go. Yeah, we did it! We murdered a bunch of men. And women of the community. Alright, and that is the door to the first boss, but first I want to show this off. The museum. You can come by at any time and eat certain enemies. So Needle, I don't really need Needle as a power-up. I don't really like it in this game, to be honest. But I will get Sword. Sword is a great ability. It's one of the more useful ones in this game. You get like a nice little aerial attack. You get uh, kind of a, a, a decently long swing on it. And something that's actually pretty handy for this first boss fight against Wispy Woods. It hits behind you too. So if you want, you can just face backward and just continuously hit Wispy Woods. He's a very easy boss. I mean, he's usually the easiest boss in the Kirby games, but he's a very easy boss. And it also kind of shows, uh, showcases the difference, uh, the big difference that copy abilities make against the bosses, because he was the first boss in Dreamland as well. But Dreamland didn't have the copy powers, so... Fighting him is a little bit different in this game. Since now you've got some options. And some missiles. Ooh, I want you. Never mind, I don't want you anymore. Aw, oh, I wanted that though. Can I get you to respawn? Hold on. How far up do I have to go to get this man to respawn? Eh, not too far up. Alright. Anytime you see a Waddle Dee or a Waddle Doo with a parasol, eat them, and you will get a parasol of your own. Parasol is actually a pretty useful ability in a lot of cases, mainly because, um, it's useful as a shield above you. If a projectile hits you from above, then it doesn't do any damage, and you actually, uh, disperse it. On top of that, it also makes you float in midair as well, which can be both good and bad for control. Sir, you've got a baguette for a head. You must die. We're already onto, a, onto World 2. I don't know how I'm gonna structure these videos. Probably just go as far as I can, but we're, we can probably clear these first two levels just in this video. Kirby's Adventure is significantly longer than, uh, ooh, right, you. I'm gonna show you off. Give me your body for Tornado. Tornado is a very interesting power, it's very difficult to control, but on the other hand, you're almost invincible while you're using it. Only, like, environmental hazards like spikes or, like, crushers will kill you, and I don't think there's any crushers in this game. I think certain projectiles may also hurt you as well. There's another sum game up there. I'll, I'll cover that in due time. The big thing about Tornado, however, is that it is very difficult to control, because you kind of... you kind of go wild. It also doesn't break bomb blocks. It'll break star blocks, but it will not break bomb blocks, and therefore... If you're, look if you're looking for something to help you 
break through stages and whatnot. So, like, if there's a wall that you need to blow up a bomb block for, you have to either use another power or use either Kirby's exhale uh, from when he when he's floating, like the air puff, or use the slide tackle. Uh, I don't actually like. Alright, this is the fight against Grand Wheelie. Grand Wheelie, the Grand Poobah of Wheelies. We haven't seen any normal Wheelies yet, but we will. Because he summons them. Okay. Uh, there's only room in here for one of us, Grand Wheelie. Give me your children. Thank you. Kirby loves the children. Wheel is a great power-up. Sometimes it's also an awful power-up as well. But it's a great power-up because you basically just charge through at enemies. Not really given a heck. There we go. Like Tornado, a lot of environmental hazards will hit you, and unlike in a lot of later games, you can't jump with Wheel. Uh, you can only charge straight forward, which means if there's a pit, you might be going into that pit. If you're Speed Racer, you might be going over that cliff. There we go, let's get Parasol here. I think this is another stage with a UFO room? I wanna say... Yeah, okay. So this will give us another chance at getting the UFO power-up, uh, but it's gonna actually... I might just use Parasol. I think I can... Uh, well, not if I lose my power. Get down here! Alright, or not. Oh, shoot. This is gonna require some tight timing here, unfortunately. There we go. But in here is a maximum tomato and a UFO. UFO is probably the best power in the game, as it is a combination of beam and laser, but with an added benefit of free flight. And yes, this free flight can also be used in water. If you just tap the button, you will perform a beam attack similar to, well, beam. Holding down the button, however, will allow you to charge up a laser, and fully charging it will allow you to shoot a star shot, very similar to if you've got an enemy in hand. Although I think a lot of the laser games, uh, la laser games, wow, just make it a bigger laser blast instead of, uh, um, of a star shot. Because the star shot is also affected by things like water as well, like you'll notice that it only goes a set distance. If we use it on the ground, it just travels straight horizontally. So I'll- I'm gonna try to- As soon as I fucking say it. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep UFO for as much as I can, at least in this first video. I will be showing off other locations where UFO is as I remember them. But that's gonna be a big as I remember them. Also. Bronto Burt. No, no. Ah. Well, we've lost our UFO powers. Our ability to just say screw it to platforming has been revoked. Here's the first of a new thing introduced in this game, the Meta Knights. Meta Knight is a villain in the game who has an army of knights at his service. And there are these rooms where we must defeat each one. They will come out in different areas and many of them have their own different like attack patterns as well. There are four of them in total. There's the 
the trident flinging ones, the ball and chain guys, the axe dudes with the skull faces, and the weird, almost kind of robotic looking ones, the, the weird faceless ones. Either way, we defeated the Meta Knights. The Meta Knights may be a mini-boss, but they're like any other enemy. You can just inhale them and then spit them out at other dudes. Alright, since we've got our options for mini-games here at a museum, how about we show off the second mini-game? Egg Catcher! Press the buttons to make Kirby's mouth open. Try to eat eggs, but not bombs. It immediately ends if you eat a bomb, but if you can get enough eggs, you will actually start getting extra lives from them. So if you've got good timing and, you know, a, de a decent uh, grasp on your B button skills, you can get a few lives from that. But when it comes to lives, I think the, the more reliable route is, is Crane Fever, and I'm gonna show off what happens when you get a small boy here. The small boys, as you probably expect, are only worth one life in comparison to the two lives that the big boys give you. But they are also a lot more lenient to catch. Uh, let's try for this big boy, actually. My TV is also at an angle, so it's a little bit weird to see sometimes. Yeah, you have been caught, sir. You big pink marshmallow. Alright, and that's a three up right there. So how about we check what's in this museum real quick before we get to the next one. So laser and fire. Fire is, as you'd probably expect, close range flamethrower. Pokes at a de decent distance in front of you. Not my favorite though. Laser, on the other hand, is really cool, because in this game, you fire it out of your hands. You basically have a Frieza Death Beam. Laser is a very unique power-up, because it not only does it travel horizontally, it's also sometimes your only way of attacking enemies above you as well. Not because you can aim it up, but because it actually reflects off of surfaces. So let's get in here. Give me your soul star. Give me your soul star. No. I think the slowdown is going to be the biggest killer for me here. Like the controls being a the control being a little feeling a little bit different than I'm used to is also not a great thing. You need to die. But it's also the matter of like. Slowdown and the unresponsiveness sometimes get you too. Alright, well, we got our spark power at least. Uh, ooh, we get access to stone, but this is not a good fight for stone actually. This guy, I don't even remember what this man's name is. Uh, his name is Clock, Clock Dude. Clock guy. He will summon music notes to try to hit you. He's an alarm clock after all. But he will grant you the power of Mike Kirby if you eat him. He's the only enemy that drops Mike Kirby. And Mike Kirby is pretty darn useful. Because it is a screen clear, but it hits enemies three times. It can be used up to three times. But we're not going to get that second use out of it, because I actually want to get this one up. There's also the thing about uh, laser kind of bouncing off of walls as well. Uh, what's in here? Health. Which is useful. Yes, walk to your death. Feed the Kirby with your blood. And if you do not have blood, 
then feed him with fruit punch. Quench his thirst, for it is fruit punch, and it is delicious. I'll say goodbye to Laser for now. At the end of the stage, anyway. Besides, if I want Laser, I can just get Laser back. It's not like it's that difficult, it is right there, after all. Alright, time for another kind of sub-game we have here. The Arena. Before the arena was a boss gauntlet, the arena is an area that you can enter to fight a mini-boss to get healing items and certain copy powers. So there's a maximum tomato there, and we are also rewarded with freeze. Unlike museums, however, you- oh, oh, you can enter it multiple times, okay. Well, shoot, if you're good at the mini-boss fights, that's pretty good for getting just a free heal. Freeze you solid. One of the things I guess I didn't cover about this game is that this game has one of my favorite soundtracks of any video game. Just every piece of music in this game is so catchy and fun. And I think it works really well with the game's kind of cartoony art direction as well. Like, the, I don't know, this game kind of feels like the video game equivalent of comfort food sometimes, or Kirby does in general, usually. Oh, first opportunity to show off this. Mix. If you eat two or more enemies that have copy powers, you will get the ability to mix the copy powers together. Unfortunately, we did not get a very good mix. Wheel would have gone right through that Gordo, but since we don't have Wheel... Okay, that was useless. High Jump is not a great power on- I mean, it's okay. It's better in the remake, though, because you can use it in the air in the remake. Give me that parasol. Look at how happy Kirby is in the in the picture for the parasol, too. Okay, well, Kirby's not happy anymore. Kirby is, in fact, mother of the Irish. Okay. Well, actually, this gives us an opportunity to collect another power we haven't seen yet. Cutter! Cutter fires a boomerang projectile. It travels forward. Uh, certain things will nullify it, obviously. Bag at the head there, but the thing is, like the uh, like the cross boomerang in Castlevania, it will travel a set distance forward, but it has no cap for how far it travels backward. So you can actually launch it behind you to hit enemies that you otherwise couldn't. They're a little bit too far away. Now I want to be careful because of those bombers. And I think, actually, there's a secret here? No, it's not in this one. Sometimes the moon actually has secrets. But not today. Today, the moon is very unsecretive. Oh, I wanted the tomato. I wanted the tw I wanted... Twenty dollars! I wanted a peanut! Twenty dollars can buy you many peanuts. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. I feel like Kirby would have, like, no concept of, like, money. Alright, here's the last kind of room we haven't seen yet. The Warp Star Station. This basically allows you to fast warp to any world you've already been to. Which can be useful. Alright. Just do this mini boss fight for some health. Mr. Frosty's not exactly a, a difficult boss yet. No, I don't really think he ever really becomes difficult in the series. Alright, we got our laser powers. Let's go on to the second boss Paint Roller! 
Paint Roller here is actually a boss that kind of gave me a little bit of trouble as a kid because he's a little bit more mobile than, uh... He's significantly more mobile than Wispy Woods, but I'm talking about a little bit more mobile. Laser doesn't do that much damage to him. But if you can tell which direction he's going to go into, then he's usually a pretty easy fight. He also kicks off the walls with his roller skates, which is kind of cool. There we go. Being very kind. You can eat a lot of his drawings for, uh... for copy powers as well. Some of them actually give you copy powers, like the thunderclouds give you spark, the parasols, I mean, that's pretty obvious. There we go. Second part of the dream rod, grabbed. I was about to say gathered and grabbed at the same time. It would have been grathered. And I'd rather, uh, I'd rather not. Doing on time. Uh, it take me a bit to actually get a, a good take for the intro, so I think I think I'm gonna end things off here. Yeah, this seems like a good good enough spot. All right, so in the next episode, we'll be continuing on through level three, butter building, and shooting our death beams at everyone, and figuring out where we need to go next. I'll see you guys later. This is Tales Froga signing out. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope you're having a wonderful day.